Paul, I just, he's my boss, but I just fired him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here I've been Big Bear with 1984 Olympic gold medalist Henry Tillman. Uh, first of all, Henry, um, thanks for taking the time. No problem. Uh, first, I want to ask you, starting with your amateur career, you beat Mike, you were just talking about Mike Tyson, you beat him twice as an amateur. What was he like in the ring, and did you think that he would become what he became in the pros? having fought him in the amateurs? Oh, oh, definitely, yeah, he was a man child. Tyson was, was knocking out ty grown men at 16. What 17, was, 18 years old. So when, when you were in the ring, but you beat him twice in the amateurs. Yeah, but he still gave me the blue, wasn't easy, he dropped me in the first fight. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nothing easy about that. And then you beat him to go to the Olympics. Right, uh, correct. What was that like? I mean, did you know, I mean, having beaten him before, going into that fight, what was your, your, your mindset going into that? Were you worried about being dropped again? Not really, because see, at that time, I was so new to boxing. And things that I know now, I probably wouldn't have did as well then because I would have been worried about certain things. Because it had been on my mind. Like, I didn't know that a guy with 100 fights, I shouldn't have been fighting. You know what I mean? Only because I had 15, 16 fights. I didn't know all that. I just thought, in the regular being, you had, you had to fight. And that was it, and the best man win. That's how I looked at it. But that's all I really knew. And so my first trainer, Mercer Smith, was brilliant in that and not inform me all this experience and this and that, you know. All I knew, you, you, you fought open when you had 10 fights. And that was it. My 11th fight was with Elmer Martin from the Navy. He had 100 some fights. Did you feel like you were expected to lose that fight with Tyson and you kind of upset some people? Uh, I think people expected me to lose, not me, because I had confidence in myself. You know, from, like I said, from my experience, what I knew about boxing, I felt that I could win because I thought Tyson was just too little to beat me. You know, in my movement, I knew I could move good. So you go on in the 1984 Olympic team, probably, or you know, at least in the conversation, if not for sure, the best Olympic boxing team of all time, the 1984 team, and you won a gold medal on that team. What's it like having your name always going to be alongside people like, you know, Pernell Whitaker, Melder Taylor, Mark Breland, those kind of people? Oh, it's a great feeling, you know what I mean? Uh, but I achieved mine at the time, you know, when, when boxing was really at its high, and, you know, and, and when you win the gold medal, you you with that elite few. You know, you with the Ali, the Wilma Rudolphs, the Jesse Owens, and so on and so forth. You can never take that back, and it's forever. What and, was that team like? And did you, considering you guys were all so great, was that really close bunch, or were you more concentrated on you know, yourself and not so much them? We were concentrating on what we had to do, but uh, we were like a team. Uh, we were like a family, in other words. We traveled everywhere, and they did a great job with us. Pat Nappy and uh, Roosevelt Sanders was assistant coach, and uh, Ken Adams and all those guys. They did an excellent job with us, was traveling us together, in and out the country, around the country, in all the big tournaments. And it gave, well, mostly, mainly me, because I was the least experienced fight on the team, but it gave me that international and that national experience because my first time going to Nationals in 82 and I started boxing in March of 82. In December, I was in the Nationals in Indianapolis, Indiana. You mentioned uh, like, like Edwin Moses, but that, that whole 1984 Olympic team, you know, outside of boxing was great too. You had Moses, yes. Carl Lewis, yes. Mary Lou Rett and all these kind of yes. people. So were you kind of starstruck there or was there anyone that you were really excited to meet that you got to, to hang out with and talk a little bit? No, I, I've never been the kind of person that's, that's like starstruck behind whatever somebody achieved me said because I've always believed that a person achieved that because they put the hard work in. I respect their work ethics and I respect their achievements, but I still try to treat them like regular people because I think that they respect that, you know, because they get it enough. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being a fan, and, and yes, I, I, I have favorites in whatever sport, but I still know that they had to work hard, you know, and I respect their work ethic and I respect their stand power and, and them just being focused and tunnel vision on what they have to do, you know. And, and by me going through that myself, it makes me respect them even more because I know what they had to go through and the sacrifice they had to make to get to that level. What was that Olympic Village like? I always hear crazy stories about that. Were you uh, having a good time there? Well, you know, I'm from L.A., so I live probably eight minutes from the village, so I used to ride my bike up to USC. And so... Uh, it, it was it was fun because I got to see my mother every day. She worked in Olympic Village at the time, you know, uh, at, at a, a, a department store. And so I would see my mother just about every day. And I would drag Sweet Pea, Breedland, Holyfield all along with me because they wanted to get around. They knew I was from here. We would go to my parents' house to eat. My mother would make something for us to eat and everything. So 
it was a good time, really a good time for me. And, and most important, I was able to have my family there, my mother and father, uh, preferably. And then I had school teachers that came, you know, especially if people thought I was going to mount to nothing. Because, you know, I had a, a roller coaster uh, uh, upbringing, not right. from my family side, but all because of things I chose to do. Right. You know, and just being in the streets and in and out of juvenile hall, camp, YA, Scott and Scudder, you know, basically state raised with a mother and father parent base. And that's what kept me from being so just totally institutionalized. You know what I mean? All right, so you, you win the, the Olympic gold medal in 1984, turned pro. Had a nice career, but it didn't, you know, stack up to, to some of your, your peers. Or were you satisfied? And when you look back in your career, what do you think? Yes, I did, I did my very best. I'm totally satisfied. I'm at ease with myself. I'm comfortable in my skin. I did my very best, even with my wins, with my losses. And what people would call a failure, but it's okay. I, okay, I lost in the World Championships. I got the silver. Okay, I lost in the Pan Am Games. I got the silver. You know, so, I, and I mean, I wish I could have got the gold, but I did my very best. So you fought Mike Tyson again after he lost to, to mm -hmm. Buster Douglas. What was different, of course, this time, a little different outcome. What was uh, different in this fight for you? Well, Tyson was more experienced. He was he was, he was a, a full grown man at the time, and strongly just had had, had gained his experience, his confidence, and uh, you know he was in the process of becoming who he became. You know, a, a world champion and an undisputed heavyweight champ. You know, and even in that fight, I, I, I did my best. I was doing my best, and I got caught. And it's like in any heavyweight fight. Our last question: The flies are killing us. Not you. You yeah. you're sure you're nice and clean, but. Our environment here, we have lots of flies. Well, uh, yeah. Last question, uh, training. You're working out here, we're, we're out here visiting you, working with Charles Martin. What what led you to be a trainer after your career was over? Well, I just feel that um, somebody took a special interest in me and got me off the streets, and it was all through boxing. And so, and I feel that I was, that's part of why I had to go through what I went through, is to give it back to somebody like myself. You know, even if they don't become a fighter, just help them stay out of trouble and become a productive citizen in our society, whether it's a school teacher, whether it's a, a, a mechanic, or whether it's a, you know, paint cars, I don't know. But if I have just a little input on helping them stay out of an, uh, some type of uh, jail institution, I feel I'm accomplishing something. All right, man, well, we look forward to seeing Charles Martin back in action. Uh, your guy there will be fighting Adam Konaski. Uh, best of luck in that fight, and looking forward to talking to you, buddy. Appreciate okay, it. thank you. Thanks.